When we burn things when there's smoke, that's lost fuel. And so I've been building rocket stoves for about 15 years now. And I do a junkyard tour and I've actually found out that there are rocket parts that actually make it very efficient, less carbon in the atmosphere, and also it burns hotter than you could possibly want. And what I'm doing on this project is we're making a giant wooden rocket stove. And, and when we burn it, it'll turn into biochar. And that's where Michael Whitman comes in. Tell him about biochar. Yeah, biochar. Biochar is uh, charcoal suitable for soil. So we utilize this biochar or charcoal or carbon as we know it, just like nature does. And so if everybody knows that fires are essential to our ecosystem. It leaves the char and the ash behind and you know, very, very slowly it recycles and gets into the root zone. And then what biochar does is it manages the water holding seven times its weight. It manages the nutrients holding tremendous amounts of them so little washes away when rain comes. And it also manages, which is probably most important, the microbiology in the soil. Because the little pore structure inside this charcoal, which is quite porous, is like luxury condominiums to the microbiology. And when they move into this, their colonies flourish and it builds incredible biology, building carbon in the soil and sequestering carbon in a natural way. If you were to ask nature, what's the most important thing to add to soil first? And nature would say, carbon, 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 carbon. Now, once we make this biochar and then get it ready for use or make it what we call habitable, okay, and we use it, its average lifespan is about 2,000 years. So this is a permanent amendment. I'm here selling them too for like... Okay, here we go. I'll tell you what, could you cut this? Well, we cut the pizza. We need an official pizza cutter. This is the uh, Vortex model. Uh, I made this here at the, at the uh, farm, and I realized that this thing is, has all the properties of a rocket stove that I built uh, out of metal. And so that's what this is. It's a wooden rocket stove. And what makes it work is these, uh, these wings right here have a Venturi effect. By having it get smaller, it brings the, the fire into a center column. And in this center column will be stacked wood. There will actually be little chunks of wood that make biochar. And actually, by it rising up and having side action, it's going to create an incredible fire tornado that people have never seen before. And we're going to be the first to do this. This will be used at Bequinox. It's a regional burn in Joshua Tree. This was a contest that I won. I made this model. People wanted to see something that was a, a wow factor and it made biochar. What we're trying to accomplish here is create a, a burn with little to no smoke. And instead of going completely to ash, the charcoal will remain. Remember, wood burns twice. First, it burns the charcoal. Let it continue to burn with oxygen, turns into ash. We want to eliminate that oxygen as much as possible and also recirculate the gases through so that we don't get smoke, because that's what smoke is. It's all those gases releasing raw. When char is freshly made, it's not really ready for use. If you do put it in the soil, you'll have to fallow that soil for a while. It needs to kind of age or inoculate is the word that's very commonly used or charge it. Um, I prefer to use make it habitable. We're going to actually uh, put the biochar inside of a pond to get it inoculated, and then we're going to put it around the drip line of trees and in gardens so they could now have a water sink for plants. And we may be making this in a larger scale someday at Burning Man, which is what our goal is. We're trying to get burners to kind of mesh with uh, permaculture folks and also biochar folks. Max here, uh, what, what's your thought about having uh, come into this arena of, of say, eco-sensitivity and then coming in with a, something that actually makes biochar? What's your thought about that? Well, I think Burning Man has been a, a source of air pollution since it began, and it's only been getting larger as the structures get larger. So it's nice to see there's another approach to still allow you to have the ritual and yet have less impact on the environment. I think it's pretty inspiring. And the purpose behind this whole 
whole mission is to make sure that you burn efficiently and you don't burn virgin wood and you actually have a chance to bring the carbon back from the atmosphere to, into the ground. They're going to realize that they have a festival that actually could make plants grow better and they could green the desert. And that's what we're trying to do.